Buenos Nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be replacing our disk drive, which has malfunctioned. There's just one problem though. We don't have a way to get our DVD keys or Dewey. That's where the bad update comes in. Now in the past, you'd have to dump your disk drive and depending on the version drive, you may have to use some kind of a probe and some fancy equipment. You'll still have to use a little bit of fancy equipment, but not as much. Without further ado, let's show you how we get our DVD keys and dump our NAND. So we'll use our incredibly disgusting test controller here. And of course the USB loaded up with the bad update. And just to ensure that there are no issues for this customer, we're gonna remove their hard drive. And of course our flavor for this endeavor is gonna be Rock Band. We're currently using the 1.2 version of bad update. And let's begin. I've had some pretty good success with bad update running quite quickly. It's been running between 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes it's under five minutes and well, you may see it take as long as 10 minutes with this new version. Definitely leaps and bounds over the 30 minutes. And there we are, we have our CPU key. Just hit okay on that. Next thing we'll do is we'll dump our NAND. So we'll be using simple NAND flasher for that. So we're dumping the Jasper console and it has a 16 MB NAND size. So this won't take too long to dump this console. Once we have our NAND dump, we can use that information to obtain the DVD key. I'm gonna show you an alternate method on obtaining the DVD key in a moment. I couldn't find the any button. So I just pressed any button. All right, we're gonna run Zex menu once again. And now we're gonna go into Zell and run that. We're now running Zell Reloaded. You can hook up an ethernet cable and that'll enable you to grab your CPU key and DVD key if you're running JRunner. If not, you'll unfortunately have to write down all of this information and that's not gonna be too fun. So as you can see, you have your fuses and we have our CPU and DVD key. The CPU key is the most important information out of this. And obviously the DVD key, you're gonna need that. If you don't know which drive you have, or if you wanna be sure, just open up your console and check it out and that way you can order a replacement. Before you even begin to flash your drive, you may require a couple of tools, such as an external power adapter, or maybe some of these other tools that'll allow you to interface with the drive via USB on your computer. Now, if you don't have any of these tools, you can and of course power the drive using the Xbox 360. There are also PCI to SATA cards you can use to flash the drive. All right, let's begin the flashing process. At this point in time, you'll be opening up the NAND and JRunner, and of course, you'll be using the CPU key which you obtained using bad update. This would have been saved on a USB drive in a text file. We'll head on over to the key vault and see which kind of drive you have, and that's listed under OSIG. We have a light on drive, and of course there's our DVD key. This is probably the easiest way to obtain the information on your disk drive. You can open up Jungle Flasher and that's where you'll use the DVD key which you obtained previously and you'll be opening up a firmware for your applicable drive. Open up a source firmware which will match the drive that you have in there currently. I've chosen to flash a stock firmware to this drive and of course I'm gonna be using the DVD key which we obtained previously. I had to do this because the customer's disk drive drive controller had failed and so we had no way to obtain this key anyway even with probe tools and so on. Once you're done flashing the disk drive you can go ahead and install it into your console. You've just programmed your DVD drive with the appropriate drive key. Now it's time to install it into your console. I don't have the usual executor tool that I use to puncture the tabs that are hidden below here and here, but this works just as well. There we go. Flip that over, lift up this tab right here, 
here. And I guess I'm gonna need my gazpacho. And there we are. Of course, you're gonna have some Torx screws that you need to remove, really it's only six. And then of course, this right here, you'll need to gently pry up. I've had some consoles that have been sitting in the sun or just from age and you've bu and I've busted the nub off of this thing, so you wanna be careful. And you just flip it over, this lifts straight up. And here's the drive. In my case, the customer has a DG-16D2S-09C drive, which is a light on 93450C. And we're gonna replace it with a 74850C, which should be fine because of the way Microsoft does their firmwares. And of course you wanna remove this off of the original drive. You just push up while pushing out and it'll just slide out of there, no problem. And of course it clips straight down like that. I'm gonna plug in the console, make sure games work before I completely seal it up. All right, we'll go ahead and try out one of the launch titles here. Sounds pretty good so far. Looks like we're loading in. Key thing to make sure of is that the game is not stuttering during the FMVs. Now I know this disc isn't in the absolute pristine condition, but it should be good enough. And there you have it, an easy way to obtain your DVD drive key in the event that you need to replace your disk drive. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Until next time.